thank you very, very much for joining today's webinar. So as you can see um, in your screens and when you, what you got in the email that we sent, um, today we're going to talk about microphones. We're going to give you an introduction about how microphones work, what are the best type of microphones, basically just like a one-on-one on microphones. I'm going to be today's host. My name is Angela Serrano and I am the head of talent management. I have spoken to some of you already, but just in case you don't know, well, nice to meet you guys. So, um, as I was mentioning, the topics that we're going to go over today, um, first of all, we're going to start with the types of microphones. We're going to go over more deeply in condenser and dynamic microphones as they're the most common, but I just wanted you to know that there are many different types of them, and that's why we're going to go over um, the, like, the basic types of microphone first. Then we're going to go ahead and talk about polar patterns and why they are important. Um, then we're going to make a comparison between USB microphones and XLR microphones. Then we're going to let you guys know what are our team's top microphone picks. Um, basically, we're going to let you know what are the microphones that uh, the quality control team and the talent management team prefer overall. And at the end, as usual, we're going to have a Q&A um, section. So if you see at the top panel of your screen, you're going to find uh, the Q&A button. You can click there and add your questions as I'm speaking or at the end. Or you can also leave your questions in the chat just in case you cannot find them there. So um, let's go ahead and get started. So the types of microphones. There are three main types of microphones. Um, the, the, this main type, these main types are condenser, dynamic, and the rebound microphones. There are other types of microphones as well that you may find in the market, but are not very common and may get really expensive. So we're going to go over and talk about this three main types first. So um, condenser microphones, um, they basically follow the capacitor theory. Um, what does this mean? That they work using capacitors to produce, like, like to convert the, to get the, the signal and to make the, like to capture the audio. So the, dia the diaphragm is going to act as one of the plates of the capacitor. The other plate of the capacitor is going to be in the space, it, it's, it's going to be inside the microphone is going to be in a space and the vibrations from the wind, like from the audio vibrations hitting that like that um, first plate is going to produce changes in the distance between the plates. This is going to be creating the wave inside the microphone that will then be converted um, to like to be produced and to be in, in like to get into your preamplification and then just go over for you to for you to listen to it. Then the dynamic microphone has a movable coil that is positioned in the magnetic field of a permanent magnet attached to a diaphragm. I'm going to show you um, like a picture of that um, as well. Um, the diaphragm vibration is going to move this coil in the magnetic field that is going to produce a current like a current that is going to vary in the coil through the electromagnetic induction. So basically this is more like theory part. This is how the dynamic microphones work. Um, thanks to this, the dynamic are the dynamic microphones are a little bit rougher and they are less like sensitive than condenser microphones as well. Um, the other one type of microphones that is still common but not that common as dynamic and condenser is the rebound microphones. Um, in the ribbon microphones, you have basically a metal ribbon that is connected to the microphone's output. And the vibration within a magnetic field will generate an electric signal. So basically, this ribbon, like this metallic ribbon that you have in this microphone, is going to help um, produce like the, the variations in like yeah, the electromagnetic variation so that the like the audio is captured on that front. So um here you're going to see uh like a small drawing or like a graph of how the condenser microphone works so as i was explaining to you you're going to fat to have some sound waves that are going to come basically if you're recording your voice this is going to be your voice you have a front plate that is going to vibrate that is going to and all those variations that you have between the front plate and the back and the back plate are going to create the or like are going to to capture the audio signal and that's going to be output to well your the cable and your microphone and it's going to go over the um, 
like the the recording change the recording chain that you have um condenser microphones are very sensitive to sounds and have a great transient response um also, the frequency response is usually very good and they're great at capturing high frequencies with accuracy. This is because this motion and this like movement that you have of this plate is very delicate. So as you know, high frequencies have like they are they have a low like a like a smaller wave. So that's why it's gonna be you have to have a very sensitive microphone for them to be captured very well. Usually these microphones are the best for this um, application. Also, the condenser microphones for what I just explained in regards to the high frequencies and um, about that is that they're the most common for vocal recordings in studio. Um, they also tend to be expensive. However, you can find a lot of condenser microphones that are um, quite, um, yeah, they're, they are affordable. They're not that expensive, but they tend to be more expensive than other types of microphones as well. They also um, require an external power source to work. This is also very important for you to keep in mind. Um, you would need something that is called a phantom power. Um, most interfaces have phantom power, but it's also important for you to know that if you have one of these condenser microphones, you would need a preamplifier that has phantom power or an interface that has it. Usually it's going to have a 48 volt um, charge. That's the most common one. And that's the one that you're going to find in, in the interfaces and in the most preamplifiers. So it's important that if you're going to get a condenser microphone, you have a phantom power source. Also, for vocals specifically, large diaphragm condenser microphones are the best option. Why? Because if you have a, the, a bigger diaphragm, it's better for it to capture the most like um, like ex spectrum of your voice in a very accurate way. Um, also, as I mentioned before, these are the ones that are most used in the studio due to their sensitivity and great response. If you try to use this maybe in live audio, they may be capturing um, like some frequencies that you may not want to listen to and that you may not want to record. So that's why they're really used in, um, in studio recording. Now let's go over the dynamic microphone. So as I was explaining before, you have the sound waves that, is, that are going to get to the diaphragm. This diaphragm is going to create vibrations and is going to change the, it's going to move the coil that is around the magnet, as you can see in the picture, and the electromagnetic variations that are gonna be created between the magnet and the coil is what is going to create, um, is going to help capture and is going to create the electric, like the audio signal is going to pass it to like uh, electronically speaking so that it can capture the audio um, as well. Um, now, as I was explaining before, the dynamic microphones are more robust and resistant, which is why they're most used on stage and for live performances. Basically, if you have one of these dynamic microphones, um, you can just, yeah, you, you can be rough with them and you can treat them very not that well. You can just like take them over and you can go on trips with them and everything and more likely nothing is going to happen to them. They're very, very resistant. Also, um, they have a wide variety of prices and sizes, being the most of them pretty affordable. Dynamic microphones, I mean, you can really find some very, very good ones for very cheap prices. Um, also, for example, if you are a singer or if you are going to go to rehearsals, you can find very good um, dynamic microphones. And most of the recording um, like rehearsal places, they have this type of microphones, as I was explaining before, they are not only affordable, but they're also very resistant. Um, also, they do not require the use of an external power source, different from condensers. So if you don't have um, an interface with phantom power, you can just basically plug in your dynamic microphone and it will work perfectly right off the start. Um, also, the dynamic microphones are very versatile and you can find them for a very wide variety of applications. Um, as I explained before, for condensers, they're most used for vocal applications. Of course, you can use them for other things, for example, piano recordings if you want to. But for dynamic microphones, you can actually find a lot of dynamic microphones for different applications. Um, for example, to record guitars if you would like to. If you want to record, for example, um, drum kits, these are 
the to go option and you're going to find a lot of different dynamic microphones that you may want to give it a try if you want to record not only vocals but maybe other types of instruments as well. Um, also, and this is another uh, benefit of dynamic microphones, is that they withstand high sound pressure levels, making them, as I explained, very good for big instruments or very deep voices. So if, for example, you have a voice that is super deep and that maybe you have trouble because the low frequencies are maybe dam damaging your recording with a condenser microphone, you may want to give a dynamic microphone a try. They will, high, they will um, take high sound pressure levels if you're screaming or, or if you're having very um, deep, um, like, yeah, very deep voices, it will help a lot and it may give you great results for your type of voice. Um, now, let's head over and talk about polar patterns. Um, as you can see in the picture, there are six um, polar patterns in total. Um, you can find the the polar patterns, well, first of all, is the sensitivity to sound relative to the direction or angle from which the sound is arriving. What does this mean? That depending on where you are located from the diaphragm of a microphone, it will capture or not um, the audio that is coming from there. So um, the first one and one of the most common ones for on live studio, on live, I'm sorry, on stage um, applications is the omnidirectional microphones. Then um, this, for example, you can basically just stand yourself in every single, um, like around the, the diaphragm and around, and around your microphone, that it will capture the, the sound with the same strength. Like it will be sensitive in every single direction that you are standing or that the sound is coming to the microphone. Um, you also have the subcardioid. Uh, this is not very common, but it's also but you can also find it that is basically that you ha that this space is a little um is a little smaller you can see that you cannot that basically you cannot stand in 180 degrees because maybe the sound will not be captured but it will still be able to capture a lot of the audio that is around the the diaphragm and around the source um one of the most common ones is the cardioid um, it's basic, it, it will basically capture the front part of the diaphragm and a little bit on the, um, on the side as well, but it will cancel everything that is coming from behind the microphone. This is very good for whenever you're recording um, vocals because you are not going, because you can um, reject all of that audio that is coming from unwanted sources. There is also the supercardioid that basically is going to capture the same information from the cardioid, but it's also adding a little bit more on the tail on the back part of the, um, of the diaphragm and, on, and of the microphone. So this is also used sometimes when you're recording um, movies or when you are recording different you need to record not only the the main source but you also want to get a little bit more that is coming from the back of the microphone um there's also the hypercardioid this is not that common but it's also it's very similar to the supercardioid it's basically capturing the same um option the, the same space from the cardioid and adding a little bit more than the supercardioid in the lower part and the bidirectional that is also uh that is also called the um, eight pattern is um it's basically going to have the form of an eight as you can see there and it's going to record some parts from the from the front and from the back as well so it's going to have the same um strength from one side or from the other so you are going you you should keep this in mind whenever you're choosing a microphone because it will depend on what you want to record and what you would and how you want to capture the vocals or the instrument or whatever you want to record um as mentioned before the most common polar patterns are cardioid omnidirectional and supercardioid um because of what i'm saying sometimes you want to capture different like no like yeah like sound from different sources and these microphones are very good for those applications as well especially the cardio whenever you want to record um vocals um this is uh, now continue with polar patterns these are just like more graphic ways for you to see what i was um explaining in regards to how they work if you see the first microphone is the bidirectional one you can see that the microphone is in the middle and 
the um, like the sources that it's going to capture perfectly are from both sides of the microphone. So for example, if you want to record maybe um, some dialogue and you're with another person, then you can just send one person in one place and one person in the other, and you will be able to get um, a good portion of both voices at the same time. Um, the second picture to the right is the cardioid microphone. If you see it's basic, the like the microphone itself is within the circle of what is going to be captured and all the all like all the back part of the microphone is going to be rejected that way only the source of the like only your voice or only whatever is standing in front of the microphone will be captured um the third picture to the right is the super cardioid over there you can see that you are basically recording whatever is in front of the microphone but there's also some parts of the of the audio that is being recorded from the back of that microphone it's not all the way down but it's also just a little bit for you to have a little bit more space and a little bit more um sources of audio there and the last picture that you see is the the omnidirectional microphone yeah the omnidirectional um pattern well well basically you can see that it's going to record everything that is within the um, the diaphragm on the microphone as well. Um, all those pictures were taken from Shure. These are all Shure microphones, and I thought that it was very good for you to see not only like in in a drawing, but also in a more like easy to understand picture how it works. Okay, so let's go over and head to the USB versus XLR type of microphones. So here you're gonna find a chart. Um, USB. Um, they have a built-in mic preamp and it also has a converter. The converter, I mean um, analog to digital and digital to analog converter. This means that it's going to take, the converter basically, just going really um, fast over this, it's going to take the analog, like the waves that you're putting into the microphone and it's going to convert it into digital information that is going to be read by your computer. So that way you can reproduce it in your computer with your interface with whatever um, um, yeah with whatever reproduction device you're using. Um, the XLR on the other part, the XLR is basically the three pin cable that you find um, requires external equipment. The micro basically the microphone will only be the microphone itself that is what i was explaining before but it won't have any other components inside um this means that it will require for you to have an interface a preamplifier and a converter or just an interface because some interfaces have preamplifiers and converters as well um what happens with usb is that they're usually cheap um most usb microphones are going to be cheaper than um, like if you got, if you get like yourself an interface and a microphone, getting a USB microphone is going to be cheaper. And for the XLR microphones, well, you just basically going to have to get more equipment and therefore most of the time it's going to be more expensive. And the prices may vary a lot. I mean, you can find microphones, XLR microphones for $100, but they're also, they're kind of parts of $10,000. So basically, it will depend on what you want to have and you will basically have to build your own equipment gear separately and not just inside one space. Um, a lot of brands have the same microphone reference in both XLR and USB. One of the examples is the Audio-Technica AT2020. Um, what happens in this case? Um, they usually tend to have them both because they use the same components for the microphone part. That is what I was explaining before, the condenser, the dynamic, all that diaphragm and all that capturing um, like technology is going to be inside. But they're also going to put more um, components inside that microphone. Um, also, now, as the USB microphones has everything in built, Usually, USB microphones are going to have lower quality converters and preamplifiers than if you got them outside. This makes their noise floor higher than if you got everything separately. Um, also, even though the capsule may be the same, as it has make much, yeah, it makes much more processes inside, and it has to do basically everything that you would do in separate devices inside one small device. The microphone pad 
part's performance is usually not that good as if you have just one microphone doing everything that the microphone should do. So what happens in this, in this case, even if you have the Audio Technica AT2020, the XLR version and the USB version, you might find that the XLR version is going to sound slightly better than the USB, the like the USB um, reference. This happens not only because of everything that it has to do, but also because of the quality of the parts that are inside a USB microphone. As I mentioned, a USB microphone or yeah, USB microphones are very cheap, and you can get, for example, for two hundred or three hundred dollars, a uh, uh, yeah, an AT twenty twenty USB that has a preamplifier that outside of that may cost two hundred dollars, and a converter that may cost four hundred dollars, or an interface that may cost you three hundred and fifty dollars. You having everything inside just one device, that really makes the difference because. Just one device has to make a lot of processes. As mentioned, the noise floor is higher and the speed in processing is not that good as if you had things separately and if you have just one um, like device doing everything for you. So um, we personally do not recommend USB microphones. Um, we prefer for you to get um, separate equipment because if you want to have a USB microphone, it may be good, for example, for podcasts or for some radio applications, it may work because you may not need to have that high quality audio and that perfectly um, like clean final recording. Like, like whereas for voiceover recording for, for example, a, a commercial or for a video or for an audiobook. Um, for these applications, you need a very, very clean and a very, very good audio and a very good recording that may need either like little to no cleaning afterwards, little to no post production. When you get a USB microphone, usually it will have a lot of noise because you have to put the, the gain much higher for it to actually work very well. And also the microphone, the preamp and the converter are not going to be of the best quality and it may not give you the result that you or us or our clients are expecting from you to have in regards to this, um, like to this application. So we personally do not recommend you getting USB microphones. Um, of course, there may be applications where you would use them as I mentioned, podcast, or when you're just getting started and you're just getting started to recording yourself and to getting to know your voice and to um, making mock-up um, like recordings. But if you're going to want to work with clients and you want to go over the top with that, we would suggest you to just invest a little bit more and get yourself a proper XLR microphone and an interface. Um, it's much better. It will give you much better results and it will be more beneficial for you in the long term. Um, now, let's go ahead and talk about our top microphone picks for the team. We actually um, talked about it with all our um, team members the from Quality Control Team. They are the ones who listen to your recordings all the time. And um, me as well and also other team members that do work with audio as well within the company. So. Um, the, uh, just, just to mention this, these are not in the in any specific order. We just decided to take the best microphones that we found from different budgets and show them to you so you can maybe um, keep that in mind. Um, so the first choice is the Blue Bluebird microphone. Um, this microphone not only looks very well because um, aesthetically is really appealing and it's very like pretty if you want to say as every single microphone from blue but it also has a great response for example for bright voices it will give you a great response it is a very good microphone and it's only um 300 in sweetwater all of the prices and all of the information that i'm going to show you um come from sweetwater um, just for you to know, um, it's a condenser microphone. Um, the polar pattern, it's a cardioid microphone. So as mentioned, it's very good for vocals. And this microphone was basically designed for vocals. So you're going to get a great response. It's going to work very, very well. And it's really great for almost um, every single type of voice. Um, it's better for 
um, high pitched noise like mine, but it also works for other types of noises whenever you don't want it to sound very, very deep or for your low frequencies to be very boosted. This microphone would be a great choice for you. And also, well, it's actually quite cheap as well. Um, the other microphone that we wanted to show you is the Electro Voice RE20. This microphone is super, super popular. It's great. It delivers great performance, and it's also and, and it's also actually you can use it for for both on stage and for in studio applications because this one is a dynamic microphone. This was also designed to record vocals. Um, it's basically just one of the top picks for um, vocal recordings. It's great, for example, for deep voices, as I was explaining before, as it is a dynamic microphone and it withstands a lot of uh, like very high pressure levels. And also it has a very good frequency response. If you can see, it goes from 45 hertz, that is really, really low, to eight to 18,000 hertz is actually almost covering the full spectrum that, um, the full audible human spectrum that there is. And it's also really affordable. It's only $400 and it's a great, great choice whenever you, maybe you travel a lot and you want to take your equipment with you. You can just travel safe with the Electro Voice RE20 because it will give you great um, response and it will be, it, it will last more. It's more robust for you as well. Um, the next microphone is one of the most uh, chosen by professionals as well. You will find this microphone in a lot of studios um, around the globe, uh, that it's a Neumann U87. This is also a condenser microphone. And it, it's multi-pattern microphone. What does this mean? That it do, doesn't only have one polar pattern, but you can choose between different polar patterns for you to record different things. This makes this microphone to be very versatile. Um, the polar patterns that it has is that it can be cardioid, obni, or figure eight microphone. Um, it's great. It delivers a great response. It's super sensitive. So you can get almost like basically every single mouth movement that you do and you can whisper into it and you will get a great, great response. And um, it works very well with low levels of the preamp, which also makes it very good because you will be saving a lot of, of noises from your preamplifier as well. Um, the price of this microphone, it's $3,600. Dollars is a little bit expensive, but I can tell you that it's a great buy if you want to get one of these. Also, um, this price is with the price with a shock mount. Um, I would really suggest you to get it with a shock mount. Um, without the shock mount, it's three thousand three hundred dollars. So you have that option as well. But I would really suggest you to get the shock mount just to make sure that um, it, nothing happens to this like type of microphone. Um, another microphone that we recommend is also from Neumann. It's the Neumann TLM 103. It's another great microphone. If this is um, a little bit bigger than the U87, so the microphone is larger. Um, it only has one polar pattern because it was basically designed specifically for vocals. Um, it gives great results. Um, this microphone is one of my favorites. Well, personally, one of my favorites. I, I have used it a lot to record vocals. Um, like throughout my career and it's great. Um, it's very sensitive as well. And for um, high pitched and squeaky voice like mine, it gives great results because it also adds a lot of, um, of, of, of body to your microphone. It not only will give you great response to the high frequencies or into the mid frequencies in my case, but it also gives you a lot of depth. It gives you a lot of body and it will make your voice sound so rich and so nice that I really recommend this microphone for vocals that maybe you are struggling a little bit with depth and with body. It will give you a lot and it will be great. I mean, I really recommend this as well. It's a little bit, um, um, like, how do you say it? It's a little bit delicate. Like, if it's not very good with um, damaging or if, if you drop it, you may have a bad time, but I really recommend it if you can um, give it a good treatment and you are not going to take it out and maybe you're not going to just like throw it around and use it a lot, it will be great. Um, another choice is the AKG C414 XL2. This microphone is super duper versatile. 
um, it gives a, it has a lot of uses around um, the like the studio world when recording not only voiceovers but also recording a lot of microphones, a lot of instruments. I'm sorry, a lot of different applications. If you want to record even for Foley, you can use this microphone and you will get great results. Um, it's a condenser microphone as well. Um, and it's really, really good. It will give you great results. It also a multi-pattern one. You will have um, Omni. You would have wide cardioid that is like the regular cardioid, but just a little bit wider to the sides. Um, it will be hypercardioid, and it will have the figure eight um, as well. So this microphone is also one of my favorites. I've used it a lot. Also because this microphone especially has a low cut filter. So if, for example, you're in a space and you maybe are struggling with some, um, some frequencies in your space that you want to cut, you can use the low cut filter and it will work great as well. And it also has some pads. What are the pads for? Whenever you are working with very high pressure levels, you can just put these pads with so that you can adjust your microphone gain to a normal level without having this dis without having any distortions with this microphone. So I really think that this great this microphone is very versatile. It's great. Um, also it's not very big and it's not very small. So it will have so it's very actually easy for you to carry around. And um, as Oki was mentioning in the chat, it's also very good, for example, to record um, drum sets and drum kits. Um, what I would use it when I was recording drum kits is as, um, as an overhead microphone. It gives great results as well. So I would really recommend that too. Thank you, Oki. Um, and those were all the recommendations that we have in regards to microphone. Those are the ones that we recommend the most. Um, and let's go ahead and get started with our Q&A section, as I mentioned in the beginning. In the top panel of your screen, you should see the Q&A um, like space. You just have to click there and add your questions. Or if you don't find it, you can go ahead and add the questions in the chat and we will go over them. So, um, let's get started with Rachel Donahue. She's asking, would a dynamic microphone be good for a female with a husky voice? Yes, absolutely. I actually think that, uh, that if you get the RE20, um, it will give you great results. Um, I would also recommend, it was not in the list, but I also think that it's a great microphone. Um, the Sure SM7B, it's a little bit more expensive, it's around $700, but it also gives you great results. Um, it will give you an amazing, um, an amazing response to different types of voices, and I think that for Husky voices, it will work very good as well. I would still recommend maybe for you to get a condenser and try it out, but if you want to go for a dynamic one, I think that either the Sure SM7B or the RE20 would work fantastic. Um, then another question from Abdullah. Do you consider the Apogee mic as a USB mic and isn't it better than some XLRs? Okay, well, what happens with the Apogee mic is that it's different. It's, yeah, it's a USB microphone, but it works a little bit different because it, it uses the Apogee technology. Apogee is one of the best, I mean, for me, I don't know, maybe the, uh, the the quality control team members want to step in in the chat and give their opinions as well. Um, to me, Apogee is one of the best brands. I really, really like their everything that they do. And they have also been developing a lot of equipment for, for like, um, for it to be portable. So the Apogee mic is very good. For example, if you need to travel and you need to take your microphone and you need to take a lot of, and maybe you won't be able to, to get a lot of, uh, like, yeah, you, will, you won't be able to take all of your equipment, but you will be able to take one microphone. The Apogee mic may be a good option for you. If you have your studio and you will only use it in your place and you will not take it around a lot, maybe it would be much better to get yourself um, like the whole gear and the whole equipment, as I was saying. Um, however, yeah, Apogee is a great device. As OK is saying, the AD converter in the Apogee device is very, very good. Usually in every single Apogee device, that converter is great, so you may not have problems on that front. 
but as it is a USB microphone, you will always have the trouble of maybe it getting a higher noise floor than if you just got a separate interface and a separate microphone. So if you really want to travel and you really don't have a choice and it would be complicated for you to maybe use different microphones um i would recommend i would say okay we'll try to get the apogee mic because i think it would be the best option but again we really don't recommend usb microphones to see most of the time in our experience it doesn't give the great results that an xlr and interface combo would give you Okay, so um, from Rachel Donahue is that I found the Sweetwater connection interesting. I tried reaching out to them, but they did not respond. Okay, well, that would be something that you can um, email Sweetwater for. We don't have a connection with them directly because we're not being sponsored. Is that I just, I personally really like that store and I think that they have great prizes and they have great engineers that will help you out. Um, so I really, really recommend that 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 page for you to buy your equipment from um so um you have the re20 well that's great i think that that microphone is good if you have the usb version then maybe you would like to try the xlr version with an interface um it would be great and i think that it will give you great results as well um and now yeah so continuing with rachel when traveling can i use the bluebird with an icicle um, I haven't tried the icicle. I know that that's the preamplifier from Blue, if I'm not mistaken. Um, I think that it would work. Um, I haven't tried it personally, so I wouldn't be able to tell you exactly if it will work perfectly. But I know that the Bluebird is a great microphone. And if it's paired with, um, with the icicle that it's from Blue as well, I think that it would give you great results. I would try it before. So if you have the option of trying the combo or maybe listening to recordings um, in YouTube videos or maybe getting some advice on that front, I would also recommend that um, if you can. But you, you should give it a try. I haven't tried the icicle, but you can. But I know from, like, from experience that the Bluebird is great. Okay, from Pablo Plumi um that i have to use a mic preamp in order to achieve good results with this mic you should have a microphone preamplifier as mentioned there are a lot of interfaces that have great microphone preamplifiers um we actually have in our community we have an article on microphone preamplifiers and interfaces so you may want to check it out we give you out some suggestions on that front for you to choose if you want to get a preamplifier or if you want to just use your interface one um so it would be it would be a good option for you to go ahead and check if you would like to use it personally I use my interfaces preamplifiers. They work really great because the interface that I have is the, I have the Moto Track 16 and it has great preamplifiers. It, they have given me amazing results. So I haven't had the need of getting a preamplifier, but I do think that if you need that extra, um, yeah, that extra depth or that extra preamplifying and you want to change the, like the, like how your microphone sounds and you want to get maybe more specific, I would suggest you to get a mic preamplifier. Okay, so from Anonymous, any thoughts on the Rode NT1A for a moderately deep male voice in a home studio recording space? Okay, so the NT1A is very is, is a very good option for beginners. Like I really think it gives you great response um, for a lot of different types of voices. I think that for a moderately deep, maybe like a, for for a type type of voice, it may help you find your voice. Like it may help you find how you want to sound and maybe your your how you would like to to listen to yourself. But it's more of a beginner microphone you may want to well, once you are more used to your voice and you know what you want to get and maybe you should try getting another one as oki was saying in the chat the nt1a is a little bit bright so maybe for your voice that is moderately deep it will give you a good balance um but i would suggest you if you want to go ahead and give this microphone a try maybe while you get used to your voice and maybe well you'll get used to how you want it to sound um you can use it and then you can move on to maybe a more specific microphone for your type of voice um okay so yeah rachel donahue was saying yeah i really like 
um, Sweetwater. I am not in the United States. I am in Colombia, but I but they also have international shipping and it's not that expensive. So you may want to give it a try and you may want to 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 try them out. So um, I would suggest you to go ahead and, and use them and buy them. Or if you don't have Sweetwater and you don't have the option of getting from Sweetwater, you can find the same references that um, I was showing you in the slides and maybe get them from your local um, from your local store. I think that it would be good or you can just find another place for you for you to get those microphones as well. Um, so yeah, those were all the questions that we had right now. And well, I want to thank you everyone for sharing and for coming to the webinar and for talking to us and for asking all of these amazing questions. Um, we, you will find a recap of this webinar in the next following weeks in our community page. You can get to the community page by going to your dashboard or by also um, in the emails that we send you all the time in the email of this, um, of this webinar in the invitation, you're gonna find it. And um, yeah, thank you very, very much for joining. Whenever you would like to have any, if you have any more questions that you that didn't come up right now, you can go ahead and email us at support at and we'll be more than glad to help you out. Thank you very much and see you next time.